Good morning, Dr. Thompson and my fellow classmates. Today, I'm going to be presenting on a very interesting research paper titled Aberrant Hyperconnectivity in the Motor System at Rest is Linked to Motor Abnormalities in Schizophrenia Spectrum Disorders, SSD. So, what are the motor system anomalies observed in schizophrenic patients? There is reduction of primary and secondary motor cortices, aberration of white matter, alteration in cerebral blood flow in basal ganglia and thalamus. There is also alteration in the functional activation of basal ganglia. Experiment, there were 90 subjects, 46 were patients, and 44 were controls. All of them were right handed. This table constitutes information about our subjects, including the age, education, test of non verbal intelligence index score, and other terminologies and ab abbreviations, which we'll, we'll come to on later. The important thing to note here is that the AL, which is the activity level, here it is more for our control, and the patients they have less AL value, which means that they were less active during a motor activity or a task. Researchers performed resting fMRI on a 3D scanner for 8 minutes 40 seconds, followed by motor battery assessment on catatonia using BFCRS, Parkinsonism using UPDRS and MRS, which is modified order scale as you can see here. Abnormal involuntary movements was determined using abnormal involuntary movement scale AIMS, and neurological soft signs were um, calculated using neurological evaluation scale. In addition to all this motor activity recorded using wrist actigraphy, uh, which was put on the patients and controls for 24 hours, analysis carried out between predefined ROIs and computed ROIs. Generally, four major results. First, we get from motor behavioral and clinical data. Patients were slower at finger tapping, less active, that is lower AL value, which we talked about in the previous slides, had more involuntary movements and neurological soft signs. Um, resting state function connectivity in the motor system. There was sec functional segregation in controls. Connectivity was detected between cerebellum and premotor motor cortices, prefrontal cortical areas and supplementary motor areas, cortical areas to subthalamic nuclei. All these were the exceptions which were only observed in the patients and not in controls. The third result which we got is um, the resting state fMRI connectivity between groups. There was increased functional connectivity in the M1 and um, supplementary motor areas to bilateral cerebellum, bilateral M1 to left thalamus, prefrontal C2, bilateral subthalamic nuclei. All these were ipsilateral and contralateral both. Then we come to the table which tells us about the group differences of resting state fMRI of patients and controls. This pictorial representation tells us about the ROI to ROI ratio between patients and the controls. So the red indicates increase in connectivity and blue indicates decrease in connectivity. Result fourth is association of functional connectivity with motor abnormalities. So for 18 connections, there were four motor factors correlated. Increased connectivity, which relates to low scores. Um, so these were the data for patients and controls. This is table three, which, which tells us about the correlation of motor behavior factors and functional connectivity. In these four graphs, we can see the patients, which are indicated by black dots. Primary motor factor correlation shows hyperconnectivity with left rostral ACC, which is anterior cingular cortex, and right caudate, bilateral M1 to left thalamus. The spontaneous motor activity shows hyperconnectivity with left M1 and right cerebellum, while controls controls, sorry, which are indicated by white dots. In in those, catatonia and dyskinesia shows hyperconnectivity with right M1 and left cerebellum. Coordination factor shows hyperconnectivity with left SMA, which is supplementary motor cortex, to left cerebellum. Spontaneous motor activity shows hyperconnectivity with left rostral ACC and right subthalamic nuclei. Moving on. Moving on with the discussion, there were two main findings. First, patients differed from controls with respect to increased functional connectivity. And second, altered motor system regions are associated with distinct type of motor disorder. For example, thalamocortical connectivity in patients is linked with catatonia and dyskinesia. Primarily, three limitations in the paper. First being use of predefined ROIs as it limits the scope of research. Second being impact of antipsychotics as majority of the patients were on some antipsychotic drugs. Uh, and also the end analysis is inconsistent with multiple comparisons. For the end presentation, the conclusions. Uh, firstly, the abnormal motor activity at rest in schizophrenia patients are observed. Thalamocortical hyperconnectivity is associated with motor abnormalities in patients. 
and overall the observed alterations at rest may lead to reduced motor behavior. Now these are some of the references for the presentation. These are some suggested readings that I found really helpful and if anyone wants to dig deeper into the topic, they should refer to it. And questions are welcome now.